The magical algorithms of the internet seem to have me pretty much pegged because if there's an article that features entrepreneurship and wealth and psychology, it definitely feeds it right into my newsfeed and brings it to my attention. And that's how I ended up earlier today on an Inc. Magazine article about the personality traits of self-made millionaires. And it was citing a British study, a scientific study, on the personality of self-made millionaires. And they actually used the big five personality uh, traits, which is the only scientifically validated framework for assessing personality. Now, there's a lot of different personality types quizzes and assessments out there that you can get value out of, but they're, the big five is the one that really has the most research backing. And in this study of self-made millionaires, they were trying to figure out if there was consistencies among the big five of these self-made millionaires and what we might be able to learn from that. And they actually did find that there's a specific mix that suggests that there's maybe the specific personality type that predisposes you to becoming a self-made millionaire, and it is common amongst self-made millionaires. So let's dive into that in today's episode. These are the proven direct response marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Furr, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. All right, so today's episode is sponsored by me. <laughs> Specifically, check out the link in the description to BTMS Insiders. It's my training library for copywriting, marketing, and direct response entrepreneurship training. It includes over 150 hours of training, and it's like Netflix for copywriting and marketing training. So you pay one low fee, you get instant streaming access to the entire catalog. That's BTMS Insiders at btmsinsiders.com. The link is in the description with this episode. So uh, according to this study of self-made millionaires, as it was written up by the British Psychological Society, uh, they, they said, the team found that the rich participants, those with an individual net worth of more than 1 million euros, uh, million euros had a distinct personality profile from the non-rich participants. They tended to be more risk tolerant and were more open, extroverted, and conscientious, but less neurotic. Wealthy respondents were also slightly less agreeable, but this turned out not to be statistically significant. One other thing that they found was that even amongst entrepreneurs who were not yet self-made millionaires, that there was a predisposition towards these different uh, these different criteria. So I thought this was this was really interesting. And before we dive into like the breakdown of these different traits, what I want to say is like, you know, I want to answer that question if if this isn't you, if this isn't me, are we doomed to failure? And if you're thinking, uh, that doesn't sound like me, then you should know that these can change somewhat. So more risk tolerant, more open, more extroverted, more conscientious, less neurotic, and maybe slightly less agreeable. But, you know, that one's the jury's still out on that one. Um, we have patterns in these big five personality traits, but they're not stuck. Like we're not completely stuck inside one of the categories and all of it exists on a spectrum. And if you want to be able to more comfortably move around the spectrum, if you want to maybe shift how you are showing up in the world, you can cultivate behaviors and strengths that impact how you might show up on this big five personality test. Like the IQ test, if you take an IQ test, largely that test is designed to be pretty consistent throughout your entire life. If you take these big five personality tests, they, they can vary a bit and you can more intentionally cultivate certainly the skills that people, for example, high on extroversion might more naturally express. You can cultivate those skills in a way that, uh, that can give you many of the same benefits. So let's break down these, these traits of the self-made millionaires. So the way to remember this big five personality traits is with the acronym of OCEAN. So there's openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Um, and I'm going to go through one by one. So for openness, 
the people who were self-made millionaires were found to be higher on the openness. So you're more or less open. And what that means is like open to learning, open to creativity, open to adventurousness, open to novelty, open to risk, like open to these different experiences. And importantly, in the context of this, risk is one of the things that show up. Like if you were completely closed down to any risky scenario, you're going to struggle, right? Like you're like, Anything that requires risk to be successful, you're probably going to struggle with it. So entrepreneur, or these self-made millionaires uh, do tend to be higher in the openness. Now, conscientiousness is, uh, that's, a, that's a tricky word because I feel like I don't always have a 100% grasp, like when it's been a while since I've reviewed the definition of that word and how it's used here, I feel like I don't have a 100% grasp of, of what that means. But basically what conscientiousness measure, measures on this big five personality test is thoughtfulness and impulse control and doing what you say you're going to do. And so an entrepreneur who's able to plan, to make a plan and to implement um, a entrepreneur who is going to do what they say they're going to do, who says like, okay, th like this is the launch. This is what we're going to do. Here's the launch date. Here's the launch calendar. Here's, here's all the things that we have to do to, to make that happen. That person, you know, despite this, this like uh, eccentric entrepreneur, you know, the, the founder who's a visionary who can't seem to get anything done, like that, that stereotype of the entrepreneur is not necessarily what's going to make someone a self-made millionaire. Maybe if they're partnered up with someone who's super high on conscientiousness, somebody who's super high implementer, yes, there's going to be, there's, there's going to be a collaboration that allows both people's strengths to combine. But in general, people who become self-made millionaires are the type of people, like, like one, one example of this is uh, one of the most reliable ways to actually grow your money through time is to just consistently like come up with a plan for saving and investing and just consistently contribute and invest, con contribute, invest, contribute, invest, and don't go off and spend that money. And that's conscientiousness at work. That's, that's uh, you know, having impulse control over how you choose to invest and how you choose to spend your money. Now there's extroversion and I, I really feel like I'm kind of an introvert uh, by nature or by nurture. Like I grew up feeling like an introvert and this is measuring on that big spectrum, right? What I will say is uh, the way that I understand introversion versus extroversion is as an introvert, I feel like I recharge by being alone. Uh, for extroverts, it is the opposite. It's, it's feeling like you recharge by engaging with people, right? By being with people. And so this extroversion that might contribute to entrepreneur success, to financial success, to becoming a self-made millionaire is if you get charged up by engaging with new people and networking, like that's obviously going to help. If you need to go after investors, if you need to go make a sales presentation, if you need to go like do a marketing presentation, if you feel naturally comfortable in that scenario, you may have certain, uh, you, you may find it just easier. Uh, to to go through whatever that process is that requires connection with people. That said, I know so many successful entrepreneurs who are maybe naturally introverted, but who have learned how to turn on the socialization that is so commonly associated with extroversion, where that person may need to go recharge in their hotel room at the end of the networking event, but during the networking event, they're going to learn, they're going to engage with new people, they're going to connect, et cetera. And I'm very much the same way. The other thing is that an introvert can often isolate and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody and just like come out, right? Uh, but, but may not find that quite as easy in the middle of a big group. And so extroversion does, does like hire more towards the extroversion end of that is associated with being a self-made millionaire. But that's one that I really think that you have the capability to develop the associated skills to be successful. Now, agreeableness was like uh, the, the jury was still out on that. But like agreeableness is kindness, helping, trust, altruism. And uh, the self-made millionaires maybe scored a little bit higher on the... Uh, less agreeable, but again, like it wasn't statistically significant. So we can't necessarily say much about that. I do find that, you know, I, f I find just as many entrepreneurs who are highly agreeable and who are altruistic, who are generous, who are helpful, who find that to be part of their vision, their mission in their business, 
And I find people who are very successful who are the other way. Um, so it would make sense to me that, you know, that it's inconclusive there. Now, neuroticism specifically, like we have a lot of preconceptions about that word and a lot of ways that it's used. Um, the way that it's referred to in the context of this big five is sadness, moodiness, emotional instability, anxiety, and irritability in response to stress. Like, and And my breakdown is not like the specific breakdown based on the original people who developed this, but it's based on a general understanding of these different personality traits. Um, so the way that I think of this is, uh, is, is like, so stoicism has this, this modern reputation of people who don't feel emotions. But if you go and you read the classic stoic texts and you read from the classic stoic thinkers and a lot of modern stoic thinkers, it's not necessarily that they don't feel emotions. It's that they feel emotions, but they don't let themselves be completely pulled away by um, extremely passionate emotions. And so it's the ability basically to feel an emotion, to accept it, and then to return to center and not to let yourself be completely thrown off. Now, if you're if you are running a business um, and you want to be successful having a team and people around you, um, or if you are dealing with the stressful situations of entrepreneurship, like your ability to succeed in entrepreneurship is often relative to your ability to take on new stresses and challenges. And so if you want to be successful in that context, having a a, more of a positive relationship with your emotions and being able to feel negative emotions and not let them completely throw you off. It makes sense to me that that would, uh, that that would show up in people who are self-made millionaires. I, I want to focus in specifically on the, um, on the risk taking thing, because that has been tied to multiple traits within this big five, uh, index. And the, willingness and uh, and behavior pattern of taking risks certainly shows up for people who are at different places on those big five. And, um, and my experience, and based on the people who I know who are successful in business, people who become successful in life and business who are taking on big challenges and winning, uh, in and outside of business are people who are willing to take risks. Now, it's not about like extreme risk taking. This is about basically a, a level of risk tolerance that allows you to go out and do things where the outcome is unknown, where I don't know if I'm going to succeed or fail, fail here, and there may be consequences of failure. But these risks that there is a tolerance for when combined with things like conscientiousness are most likely what you might consider to be a calculated risk. And so that is, I'm willing to spend this much of a daily budget on paid advertising to figure out if this particular setup works and I'm going to spend that for this many days. And so I have this plan in place where it's not just, oh, I'm going to spend whatever forever. Right? It's I'm, I have this test budget set aside. I'm going to invest it in figuring out what works in these contexts of these tests. And I'm going to use what works. And it's a calculated risk knowing that when I find a winner, I'm going to be able to scale that. I'm going to be able to leverage that going forward. So it's a willingness to embrace risk, but only in controlled doses or controlled scenarios. And this goes back to like Claude Hopkins scientific advertising. The entire approach to direct response marketing that today is really the best way to, uh, to advertise online is to do controlled tests of your marketing to figure out what works, what doesn't work, what works better than what, and to make your decisions based on the data where you have a limited downside to whatever testing you may do, but you have practically unlimited upside when you find something that works, where you can really, you know, feed back that budget back into the advertising based on the revenue that you're generating, and you can scale and grow that. And so this and, and it's not just about that, like the, the sheer act of investing your money, the sheer act of putting your money into the markets as opposed to just holding it in cash, the sheer act of uh, going out there and like, I, I mean, there, there are so many opportunities to take risks that can help you get ahead, but it's about 
those calculated risks, not about just extreme risk taking. Now, if you really want to embrace this self-made millionaire personality, you know, number, number one, you have to be willing to take some level of calculated risk. You have to say, okay, I'm going to try that thing and it might work out. It might not work out. If it doesn't work out, here is the ways that I'm limiting my risk. If it does work out, here is the potential upside from it. And of course, the potential upside is dramatically larger than the downside of taking the risk. And so whatever it is, being willing to take a calculated risk. And then practicing openness, being open to new experiences, being open to new things coming to you, being open to working with new people, to trying new markets, to being wrong about things. That's one of the things about being open is being open to failure. So um, the calculated risk and practicing openness, the next part to embracing that self-made millionaire personality is doing what you say you're going to do. And so coming up with a plan, for example, uh, my small work training that I did in, in January, I talked about planning, even just you plan an hour per day for a week and you go and you do the work during that time that you were planning to do and you do that repeatedly this week, next week, the week after, the week after, this month, next month, the month after, the month after, this year, next year, the month after, the month, or year after, year after, etc. And doing what you say you're going to do uh, on a daily basis for days, weeks, months, years starts to compound and generate some pretty incredible results. And, and no doubt that that's part of the self-made millionaire personality. Practicing boldness. Man. This is something that I have worked on for, you know, probably my entire adult life and I will probably continue to work on for my entire life. And it is something where we always feel like we can grow towards being more bold. I just had Fred Joyle on Breakthrough Marketing Secrets and we did, uh, we discussed Super Bold, his book, and uh, it is definitely a skill that you can practice. And boldness is, uh, is extroversion as a behavior as opposed to extroversion as a personality type. And the more that you practice extroversion as a behavior, the more natural you may feel like you fit within the personality, uh, the personality trait. And then the fifth is to learn to self-regulate emotions. And for that, I would absolutely recommend things like mindfulness, meditation, journaling, to uh, therapy if you need therapy, like whatever it takes to learn to feel emotions and accept that you're having emotions, but not to get completely lost in them and to return to center, to be able to return to center and, um, and, and to self-regulate based on knowing that that's going to be the way that you are most capable of dealing with whatever situation is contributing to your strong emotions in that situation. Now, applying this all to entrepreneurs and to marketers, since my audience is entrepreneurs and marketers, like when you think about this, when you think about, for example, the willingness to to take on risk, to do uh, calculated risks, to to uh, to do things that have a potential downside if you fail, but have a potential upside if you succeed. There are so many things in the context of entrepreneurship and marketing where this is extremely relevant and worth remembering. If you want to become a self-made millionaire, entrepreneurship and, and marketing are great ways to do that. Marketing is a leveraged, scalable way to generate leads, customer sales, and profits. And entrepreneurship in general is really conducive to the style of direct response marketing where you're trying to get a response. Um, but it is inherently risky. It is consistently risky. Things like getting clients, things like launching a new marketing campaign or funnel, things like just putting yourself out there generally, like if you're going to speak or you're going to go on podcasts or you're going to be interviewed as part of a summit or you're going to, um, you're going to go out and introduce yourself to potential prospects, etc. Like stepping on a stage, all of these things are inherently risky. There's a risk of rejection. There's a risk of failure. There's a risk of embarrassment. There's a risk of success. There's, there's all sorts of risks. Like, um, and if you are unable to do these things because you're afraid of the risk, you're going to forever feel constrained and you are probably going to constrain your success. Things like, like networking or uh, let's say pitching a specific deal, whether that's like a, a, a client project deal or 
trying to get an investor for your new business or whatever. Like there are so many opportunities in entrepreneurship that are available if you are willing to take a calculated risk. And if you're not willing to take a calculated risk, you're probably going to struggle significantly. And that's why I think that they found these same personality traits, even in entrepreneurs prior to becoming self-made millionaires, there was some consistency between people who became self-made millionaires and people who were entrepreneurs, um, but, but maybe not fully realized yet in their financial success. Um, so what do you think? Like, does it make sense that somebody is going to naturally be more successful as an entrepreneur if they are able to embrace not risk generally, not extreme risk, but calculated risk, thoughtful risk, intentional risk that allows them to um, to take advantage of situations that are not definite, but that have a lot of potential upside if indeed they are successful. I don't know. I, it made perfect sense to me and I thought it was worth sharing to you. I'll include a link in the description to that Inc. Magazine article. It includes links to the original study, etc. So I would encourage you to go deeper if this is interesting to you. And don't forget, uh, this episode has been sponsored by BTMS Insiders, my marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship training library, which is like Netflix for copywriting and marketing training. So you pay one low fee, you get instant streaming access to all the training in the catalog. Check out the link in the description and go browse the catalog and see what might be a fit for you. I'm Roy Fur. This is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. With every episode, I'm here trying to help you increase your marketing genius. And hey, one aspect of being a marketing genius is that willingness to embrace some level of calculated risk, knowing that if it pays off, it can pay off big. And that can be what takes you over that threshold to self-made millionaire status. So, uh, again, I'm Roy Fur. Thanks for tuning in for this episode, and I'll catch you next time. See you soon. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.